Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode up here in New England. I am currently standing in a place where two weeks ago I was out here with Jim and I found one of my best, probably, well, definitely one of my oldest silvers in a very long time. So, a little backstory on that day Jim had called me up the night before and wanted to come out. Um, you know, we really didn't have any plans. Typically, we'll drive around and we'll look for a place to knock on the door for permission, and uh, we'll go from there. That day, however, didn't turn out the way we wanted it. We had driven around, we've gone up to a few places that you guys have seen in previous episodes um, to do some door knocking around those spots, and I mean, we got hit with a snowstorm a couple of days before that, and the snow up on the mountains was just, there was just too much. I mean, it was like eight, nine, 10 inches in some spots. I think even some spots got a foot or more. So we had just decided to come back to a spot that I have been to, no joke, at least a hundred times. I've spent the majority of my beginning days in metal detecting in this spot. When we got there, I had just decided, you know, let's just have some fun. We only have a couple of hours. I highly doubt we're gonna find anything worthy of filming. Like I said, I've been here many times before and there was often times that I've come here and I've left with nothing. Before I knew it, I was digging relics. I am back here today because of those relics and also because of the surprise find. It's the second one of the type out of this field. It's the third one overall and I just have a feeling there may be more. So stick around, stay tuned, and hopefully today is a good day. Well, before I get to it, turn all my equipment on and hit the ground running, I want to start off by letting you know a little bit about how this find went down. So like I said, I dug a couple of relics, um, which I'll show you in a little bit. But on this one particular case, I had dug a plug, I'd flipped it over, took my pinpointer, went through it, and I saw something shining through one of those clumps. Before I opened it up, I knew it was something good, I knew it was silver, I couldn't tell if it was US or foreign, but I knew that I had to share the moment with Jim. Check this out. How you doing over here, Jim? Not too bad. I'm cleaning up over there. And look inside of that plug. Oh, come on. <laughs> you see that? I do. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. Right where Ring it. my thumb shadow ends. Right in there. It was reading 2324. Can you guys see that in there? It looks readed, so it might be US. But that could just be my eyes playing tricks on me. You want to break that open nice and slow, Jim, for the viewers? Oh, you want me to do it? Yep, just pull that side. I'll hold this side. Let's see if we can break it right together. There it is. Ooh, Spanish. Is it Spanish? Oh, yeah. And it's a one. It's a one, baby. Oh, my God. It's Dude. one, not a half. You Unbelievable. Know, come here, with the equinox. here, flip this side. <laughs> just flip it over so it doesn't fall over. Oh my oh. god. It's a Carlos. That's an early one. That looks in great shape. Too. Is that 1737? Oh, what is it? 1787. I don't know. Oh my gosh. That is mint, 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 minty fresh. Look at that, dude. That is old silver. No ground is hunted out, Jim. Yes, I am so glad we came back here today. <laughs> It's like 17, is it 1787 or 1737? Uh, 1787. 1787? Yeah. Right there, buddy. Boom. 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 Spanish silver. That's a big one, too. That's nice. That's mint. It's the second silver of the year, buddy. I go from old U.S. to very old colonial. I swear to God, you're the luckiest person <laughs> I know. Look at that thing. Jim said it looks like it was dropped the day it was minted, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's it's old, obviously. There's some wear on there, but 1787. The pillars on the back. 
unbelievable Mexico mint mark it doesn't get any better than that does it Jimmy no that's the old silver we're looking for right there and every once in a while you'll find it so that is why I am back here today I've got the trusty Equinox 800 with me I've got my root slayer shovel and I'm gonna work this section of the field along the river. Something was going on out here many years ago. Nothing in the history books, nothing on maps, absolutely no idea, but there are things here to find. And hopefully today, this section will produce something for me to show you guys. Quickly, this is producing. I'm just going to stick in this section here. Right in here, I was digging a really good tone. I was hoping it was going to be a coin, but it's not. However, it's still something cool and unique. You know what that is? I found them before. I usually find the shoes to the animals that these go to. It's an ox knob. What they would do, the oxen's horns, you know, they were quite sharp and in order not to gore anybody or puncture any other animals, things like that, they would, the farmers would cut the tips off. It would go in like this, twist on tight. A little pin tack would be pushed into there to keep it secure and in place. And you'd have, well, you guys get the point. A little safety mechanism for back in the day. Right out of here, I had a 16-17 reading on the BDI scale for the mine lab. And that just popped out. It's an old pocket watch winder. And I haven't found one of these in quite some time. Look at the root growing right through it there. But I love them. They're very unique. They were carried on farmers or whomever might have been traveling this corridor through here on the river. Keep track of time. Wind your pocket watch. Very neat old relic and one I'm glad to have found today for sure. I'm digging everything. And here's another example as to why I don't know if that has anything on it yet. I believe it's a, yeah, it's a button, broken shank. Let me clean it up and I'll get right back to you. So there it is. And I don't believe there's anything really on that. I think that's just corrosion from over the years, the different layers of whatever they had on there for metal. Um, and I can't really see if there's any back markings on there, but you can see where the shank is broke, small little button. And it's one for the collection. So I'll keep at it. Let's see what else is out here. Well, this is kind of crazy, but um, meaning I wasn't expecting to continue to find stuff the way I'm finding stuff. I mean, I've only made, I haven't even made one pass. I'm almost at the end here of my first go about down this side section here along the river and uh i just pulled something very unique out of the hole check this out again they're just very iffy tones i'm only well i'm still learning the equinox i've only had that since early last fall and i'm messing with the settings i'm trying to figure things out you know watching videos and 
just people telling me how I should do this, how I should do that. And over time, you know, I'm kind of learning it on my own. And I'm learning a lot today, a lot of valuable lessons. This was just reading about an eight or nine on the VDI scale. And look at that beauty. That's part of a two-piece button. You can see where the shank has broken off there. And when I pulled it out of the plug, I saw something roll out of my hand. And wouldn't you know it, there's the other side. And it looks very ornate. I don't know if there's any significance to that button. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to be very careful anyway. But I'll clean that up and uh, give you guys a close-up of what this would look like all put back together. So I'm fairly certain that's a button. See the back there? Looks like there would have been a shank that was broken off. But check this out. See how it just falls apart like that? Maybe there was a stone in the middle. I don't know. I'm going to look through that plug a little bit better because, like I said, when I pulled it out, it fell apart. You know, maybe it wasn't a button. Maybe it was a pendant now that I'm thinking about it. And if it was worn and in the right sunlight, if there was a colored stone in there, maybe it shined some light through. But how beautiful is that, huh? Such a great find. Such a great hobby. I love this stuff. So again, the river runs right down on the other side of those trees and it tends to wrap around right over here. Um, actually, you could probably see it right there behind me. But I've got into here. This was more open than I thought, so I've been kind of zigzagging back and through. And I just popped out. If I can see it again here, right there. See that right there? And it was close to the surface, so I mean, I know that they've plowed and grew corn in these fields all the way up you can still see somewhat of the outline here all the way up here why they haven't come this far out now is beyond me but I think yeah that's just a broken shank flat button now again in this field I have been searching this for years ever since I started metal detecting I've become really good friends with the farmer and uh he keeps me posted on when they're plowing it, when they're planting, so on and so forth. I know when to come out here, when not to. I literally, I'm not excited about finding just regular flat buttons anymore here. I mean, there's still history. It's still exciting. It's still greater than finding trash. But I literally have jars, mason jars, full of buttons from this field. So, again, there was nothing on maps, nothing in history books, nothing at all that I can find in regards to this land about what was happening here i just know that there are a ton of relics there have been a bunch of coins and the ground just keeps on giving up so i had to take a break just for a second uh i get pretty creeped out when i have ticks crawling up my neck um they always go right for the beard but beard's not going anywhere so unfortunately i'm just gonna have to deal with ticks during tick season, um, which happens to be pretty much all year long in New England these days. I don't remember ticks being that bad as a kid, but it is what it is now and we have to deal with it. Anyway, I thought this would be a good spot to sit, take a break, um, and just show you guys the scenery. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Now this river has been used for many years, um, there was a lot of stories about Native Americans, early pioneers and settlers that have come up through here. And because of where this field is and because of all the relics that I find anywhere between, you know, from the 1900s all the way dating back to the early 1700s, clearly this was a stopping point for many of them if there weren't houses here at one point. So I'm gonna sit here for a little bit longer. I'm gonna enjoy this view check myself for some more ticks and I'm gonna make a second pass at that field heading back down towards the opposite side.
So I'm just deciding to stay in this section here. I'm going to hit all these grassy points along the way as I make my way back to where I first started. And I'm going to stay out of that stuff because, I mean, stepping in that, honestly, it's not fun. It takes a lot of effort because you sink probably three or four inches every time you take a step. It's really loosely packed in there. So I'm going to be digging this stuff. Um, I think, you know, I've gotten into a small little section here where people have probably come out and shot. Well, I, I know they shot at some point because getting this stuff, the old shell casings, rifle casings, I have pulled up a couple of uh, old square nails and of course your typical can slaw. In this case, it's a, it's a full can. It even has the tab attached. So it's one, one less thing I'll find later on. I got the whole thing here. Um, it just reminds me though, uh, I haven't told you about the other relics that I found out here the last time with Jim. I pulled out a couple of buttons. Like you see, I pull out buttons from here quite often. Not every time, but in this section I've been pulling out a lot. Um, I got an old buckle that is believed to be an old Paris trouser buckle. On the inside of the buckle, it would be labeled Paris, and it would have the two forks in the middle that would swivel back and forth, and it would be used to tighten up, you know, your strap on your britches. And then we come to my bucket lister find. Uh, I have never found a complete cufflink set. Um, you know, the two cuff buttons that are attached by that one little link in the middle there. As you'll see in the photos here, there's two what they call urn designs on these cuff buttons. Now, a lot of folks will be out there saying, oh, those are from George Washington. You know, those were morning, morning cuff links or morning buttons, um, you know, to memorialize, you know, the passing of George Washington. Um, there's also a lot of people out there that'll say, well, those buttons were manufactured over in England. Um, there's a design that's been used over there for eons. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I can't really find an exact answer to where those cuff buttons originated from or what the meaning is behind the design, if it's just a general design from over the years or if there is a significance dated back to the death of George Washington. I don't know. There's a lot of people out there that don't know and I've talked to some pretty elite detectorists in the hobby and they've all given me different answers. So I guess I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Um, do you think they're related to the George Washington death? Do you think that they were manufactured in England and they're just a general design? Um, there's also a story out there that they commemorated the first hot air balloon ride. So maybe they're not urns, maybe they're hot air balloons. Don't know. Either way, it was an awesome find. It was an awesome way to end that day the other day. And it's a reason why I've come back here today. And thankfully I did because I'm pulling up some cool relics today. It'll probably be my last time out here uh, this year. Things are going to start getting planted. Stuff's going to start growing. The bugs are going to get really bad and all of this grass in here is just going to get really tall. So I'll probably be back out here next fall after they cut all the corn and uh, get back out in the field. I'll focus back on this section again and uh, we'll just have to wait until then to see if I have missed anything today. So unfortunately, another day comes to an end. It's been a good day though. Um, I did make one more quick pass down. Didn't find much, just some junk, whatnot. But again, I was going kind of quick. I am running out of time. I need to get to places that I have planned for today. Um, I don't want to run behind like I typically do. So I'm making sure to get out of here with plenty of time left so I can go home, shower, and get ready for the other adventures today holds. I appreciate you all for tuning in to another adventure. Thank you very much for all the support you have shown me throughout the last couple of years in my videos. I'm gonna to continue to try to put more adventures out. I have more plans coming up this summer. Hopefully I'll see more friends out there this year compared to last year, and uh, we'll all get out, do some digging, and try to save some history. But until those adventures come up, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy hunting.